jasmine, oolong, green, and white. Long ago, these four teas were skillfully brewed at the Blissful Brew. Then, everything changed when the shop's popularity threatened its existence. All Mr. Okoron, the shop's owner and tea master, could do was to recruit four teenage orphans to learn his trade and staff his shop. A year has passed since the orphans were hired, and although their skills have progressed, they still have a lot to learn before they can brew anything. But I believe that they have the potential to make the Blissful Brew the greatest tea shop in the world. Last time on Benders and Brews, an Avatar Legends podcast. You've pulled some people out of the way, gotten them kind of a safe distance away. There's still maybe like three workers that are like battling this thing actively. So he's just smashing the ground around him, trying to hit the people. Are there any particular weak points that I'm able to see? Something about that gem that's sitting kind of almost on top of where its head would be seems significant to you. So how big is this thing? Oh man, I mean, it's a good like 10 feet tall. So I'm gonna try and climb up some like piles of rocks behind it. I'm gonna try and jump on top of it and uh, I will try and strike the gem and I will try and lock, dislodge it. It's squirming around trying yep. to shake me off. It has no no idea what I am, where I am, what I'm trying to do. Right. And I'm just starting to wail away at the gem on top of his head. As you're slowly pulling this gem out, you can see some of the chunks of rock actually falling from its body. What here can I use to help Brock? Look at those rock colonnades or whatever mm -hmm. on the side of the hill. I'm going to attempt to take out the small piece of stone that's holding the pillar up. Oh, and cause it to kind of collapse. I will attempt to destroy this gem okay. on top of the monster. You use smash, you raise your hand above your head, you come down hard as your fist makes contact with it. The gem itself breaks free uh, from the creature's head it flies up as it does. The creature starts to kind of like wobble and so on. The rock to tumble forward and start rolling down the hill, as you mentioned. It comes down and sort of sweeps its legs out from under it. So the whole beast kind of just tumbles backwards and falls. You've got the giant gem in your hand. This is just a theory, mind you. But I think what you've got there is known as the heart of the mountain. All right, let's get over to Chin Village. As you're walking towards the center of town, and as you do, uh, music and uh, crowds speaking and talking and chatting and stuff starts to get louder, and eventually you approach uh, what seems to be a massive festival going on. There's like a big podium or whatever, and somebody walks out wearing like some very nice fancy clothes. Attention, attention everyone. It is time for the festival's proudest tradition, the revealing of the scales. And he pulls back the curtain and everyone gasps. Where is it? Someone's stolen it. Please, everyone remain calm. We are sure to find the green scale. I'm sure it was a simple misplacement. Never fear. We will find it and the festival can continue as normal. Welcome back, everybody, to another awesome and amazing episode of Benders and Brews. Today, we're doing episode three and continuing off on the cliffhanger where we left things in Chin Village, where the great uh, serpent Shui Shui scale had mysteriously been stolen. A scale that you guys had only just recently found about by attending this festival you didn't expect to attend. But before we get to all of that, we have a character question to get out of the way and also in addition uh gotta let everybody know that we do not have uh Michaela, aka Mika here tonight with us um she had some stuff that she needed to do so it's just another guys night with the bros bros night bros night boys night boys night classic the guys. it's a it's a throwback to season one's boys night this is boys night part two which we know is everyone's favorite episode of everybody the loves season. a boys night <laughs> Awesome. So let's kick things off with Connor, a.k.a. Brock Lee over here. Give us an interesting fact about our boy Brock Lee. So another interesting fact about uh, our boy Brock Lee is we were talking about uh, how his, his dad is the cabbage farmer that is in the show. And since this takes in place before the Hundred Year War, 
uh, I should mention our family discovered uh, the key to not eternal life, but to really, really dragging out the years. And it's pickled cabbage juice. So he soaks every night in just a barrel of pickled cabbage juice. That's how he looks like he's 50 in the show. And he's actually like 275 canonically. Um, so that's that's how he does it. So. Right. I mean, to be fair, like this happens somewhere in the Hundred Year War, just like early on. But I mean, yeah, that would still be like a hundred, yeah, so, somewhere around a hundred years old at yeah. least. So. Yep. So he's like, he found that out when he was hiding from the Fire Nation, actually. Oh, so he okay. hid in a pickle, <laughs> a, like a barrel of pickled cabbages. Then oh. he came out. and He was like, you know what? I I'm looking nice. I feel he, great. I feel great. I should do this more often. And so, yeah, he does that, and that's how he survives an extra 100 years to meet up with the Aang gang. He's like uh, Ra's like, al Ghul from Batman <laughs> with his with his pool of, like, rejuvenating water. I get the Lazarus pits, but it's... <laughs> it's like a Patrick, Patrick uh, Bateman from the yep. American Psycho. He's yep. got his pickle oh, yes, water yes. routine. <laughs> He's like, I glaze myself in like pickle, 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 pickle juice uh, every morning. Keeps yeah. me fresh. Keeps me young, vigorated. <laughs> that's, that's him. He's basically American. So wait, I have, to, I have to. No, I have to ask. Does Does broccoli know about this yeah. measurement? How could you walk past him and not know about? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Like, okay. Then, and then, then the, the second question is then, since he knows, does he partake? I, I think he's he's gonna hold off on it because I mean he wants to he wants to age a little bit so he looks more mature so maybe when uh, he's like in his twenties he'll probably do that so that way he'll look like he's twenty until he's like three hundred. Oh, I thought you were gonna say he's already doing it and that explains why he looks like a full grown man but he's only like seventeen. No, no. <laughs> see, see, it stops the aging process. It doesn't accelerate. Oh no! I was saying he's doing. It. He's like forty years old, but he's started at seventeen, so he still looks seventeen, but he's like forty. So basically, what you're telling me is he bathes in kimchi. Not, not, not Brock yet. Well, no, 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 no. no, no his his dad. dad bathes in kimchi. Yeah, essentially, yes. Oh, interesting. Yep. Whatever cabbages he doesn't sell. You've heard it here, folks. Go home. Buy yourself. Go to your like like <laughs> local nearest Asian market and buy yourself a lot of kimchi. They will appreciate you for it, mm-hmm. and once you bathe in it, you'll appreciate yourself for it. Exactly. No one around you will appreciate you for it. No, <laughs> you'll love yourself seventy-five years down. The line. That's you right. Still you look will. like you're fifty. Yes, and you smell like you're dead. Exactly, <laughs> but you're not. Dead. But you're not dead. All right, Dave, aka Guao Han, give us a give us an interesting fact about our boy Guao. So Guohan's Guohan's a type of kid to tell you, like, I can do a backflip. Okay. <laughs> okay. But if you ask him to do a backflip, there's always going to be some excuse. Like, um, I'm not wearing the right pants. Or, Just bought these shoes. I didn't stretch. Yeah. Or I stretched too much. I pulled something. Oh, while gosh. I was no. Yeah. All right. He's not only the kid we all know that'll say that he can do a backflip. He's the kid we all know that when you ask him, he won't. Exactly. <laughs> okay. That's great. That's awesome. All right. Last and not least, we've got Bill Dor- or Sorry, Cameron here, a.k.a. Bill Dor. And Cameron is going to pull an interesting fact about Bill Dor out of somewhere he's in there and yeah, like magic that's how i come up with all my facts so they that's come right. up with them on the spot on Skyler the always spot. tells me come up with them beforehand and i show up without a single fact in mind and so Skyler here's says, my what one are you doing? my one on the spot uh it, it's a callback to the my uh prequel episode so i'm no one else here really know the guys don't because we didn't listen to each other's prequels right? right hopefully uh and uh but in the episode a bill talks about uh his family used to go boating right uh, but the thing was, it was in the episode, it wasn't clear, like if that was a lie to protect his cover or if that was something he, uh, really did. And I'm right. here just to confirm, like that was a, like a big thing his family did. They li- when he grew up, he lived all- near the docks and his family had a boat and they would go out every weekend and go fishing and stuff and go just boating and right you know, just enjoy the water and stuff along the the, so the, the the ocean. So he like knows boats. Yes. Yeah, so well. when so in the prequel episode when he was talking, 
uh, to the guy, and he asked him like hey, if he knew boats well. And Bill said, "Yeah, I know. I yeah, grew up on boats. Basically, he was not lying about that. No, so I'm no. just here confirming and also saying like that's his fact. Is like he's big into boating. Right like, on. He loved boating and right stuff. On. But like, he hasn't been able to do it because when you're trapped in the middle of an Earth Kingdom, hiding from, just hiding from your reasons, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. You're, there's no boats anywhere. There's no so. boats. No, not if you're on land. So the fact that we're now on another like dock shore. Where That's true. Boats and we have a boated related adventure. It builds kind of excited. That's right. Right on. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, I'm Skylar. I'm the game master here. And interesting fact about me. Let's see. This weekend I walked through a drive through um, and I got looked at really weird, but I did get food. So uh, that's, I guess, a possibility. Anyways, all right, onward to the episode. All right, and we're back with Benders and Brews, episode three. Last, you guys uh, were headed out. Uh, you guys came across kind of a mountain pass where you guys fought against a some sort of earth mountain spirit of some kind and successfully managed to take it down, procuring what uh, the old man that was helping you guys out referred to as the heart of the mountain, which is a sort of gemstone that allegedly holds the spirit of some sort of earth spirit, like within it or something to that effect. You're not 100% sure. Um, that was all he was able to kind of help you guys out with or as far as giving you information. But whatever the case, um, you guys quickly found yourselves in Chin Village, which was kind of where you guys were headed before uh, leaving, it's kind of the port village that you'd stop at before you head over to Whale Tail Island, which is your ultimate goal, uh, based on the hints that Master Okaran had given you. And in Chin Village, you couldn't find anybody until eventually you followed some, some music and came across everybody all in one place in the town center. And it seemed like there was a big festival going on of some kind. And it turns out they were all there uh, for something to do with a, a fancy scale. And when they went to reveal said scale that they claimed was from some sort of spirit, lizard, creature, something named Shui Shui, uh, they pulled back the covering of the, the display where the scale was and there was nothing there. And everybody seemed pretty distraught about that. Um, as you guys are standing there in the middle of the square, all around you, people are whispering, gasping. Some people are starting to panic a little bit. Uh, you see one guy in particular that's wearing very like drab, dark clothes, and he's got like stuff all over his face, like like it looks like he's covered himself in um, ashes or something. And he is he is absolutely panicking. He is freaking out. Um, there's the mayor from two different towns. Well, a mayor from two different towns. <laughs> the, he's got two hats. There, there are two mayors, each from a different town. There we go. Standing up on the stage. They are panicking. Uh, the one mayor seems to be like trying to calm everybody. He's waving his hands around. And he's saying, Now, now, everyone, please remain calm. I'm sure that everything is okay. We will find the scale shortly. The other one is just like standing there, like wide eyed and just shaking. Just kind of like almost <laughs> seizure as the classic like one saying, "Don't panic, don't panic," and the other one's going, "Now is the time. Now to is panic. the time <laughs> to panic." And uh, yeah, um, for the purposes of this episode, since Michaela's gone, yes, yeah, she's going to be an NPC following the group around, uh, quietly analyzing everything around her. <laughs> and she is Silently she's quite us, so yes. What's new? <laughs> Uh, what are you guys doing as everybody's kind of panicking and starting to freak out? It wasn't me. <laughs> There's nothing in this pouch. <laughs> well, I mean, there is some stuff in this pouch, but not any scales. Should we go up to the guy who's yelling to not panic and just, is it really our business? I mean, we're, we're trying to, we're on a bit of a time crunch, you know? So I mean, what do you guys think? Should we try and help these guys? Or? I forgot why we were here. So we you guys, the you guys made your way, way. yeah. Well, yeah, but why are we in the town? I because thought we were trying to get a boat. Yeah, well, that's so the town sits on the shore, and then you would take a boat from here over to Whale Tail Island. But the problem is, is that nobody was here. Uh, everybody was in the at the festival, so nobody was there to like get you a boat or or sail you over themselves or whatever the case. Yeah, I think we were trying to find some uh, 
some friendly characters to help us get a boat mm-hmm. over to Whale Tail Island. Guys, maybe we should get out of here before things get any crazier. Let's try to get a boat. Yeah, let's yeah. Just, yeah. And just as you're saying that, try someone who's not all of a sudden the mayor looks over towards you and he says, Them, over there, who are they? And he looks over to the other mayor figure, and she stands there and just kind of puts her hands up like, I don't know them. And he says, quick, grab them. And a group of guards surrounds you. And uh, he says, bring them to me. I want to have a word with them about this dastardly crime. And so sure enough, I mean, assuming you guys aren't fighting against them. (laughs) We need to get a bow. Ah, rocks. (laughs) Rocks. (laughs) They lead you behind the stage. Oh, are they leading us to a boat? <laughs> to which the mayor uh, kind of comes back by and he's like, Don't worry, we're going to settle all of this. Everybody's eyes are on you as they lead you guys back. Perhaps they're the ones that took it. We can get it back, incarcerate them, and the festival can continue on as if none of this ever happened. And uh, so as they lead you back behind the stage, uh, he insist that the guards search all of you search them for the scale and they give you quick pat down and he says no scale and and they say no no scale sir and he says, all right all right i must ask what are the four of you doing here we're uh we're looking for a for someone who can help us out with a boat a boat to where wait no First, tell me where you are from. We're from further into the Earth Kingdom. That one. Gowling. Gowling. Ah, Zhaoling. So you must have traveled through the mountain pass then. Yep. Yeah, just last night, yesterday. Sure did. And now we want a boat to Whale Tongue Island. Whale Tail. That's Whale what tail. I said. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must admit it seems awfully suspicious for a group of strangers to show up in my town during our festival. Just as our price scale has gone missing. Why is this scale such a big deal? Excuse me? You are not familiar with the great Shui Shui, the great serpent spirit who gave us her precious scales as a blessing and a sign of good luck so long as we are in possession of it. In one ear, out the other, bud. <laughs> Nor care for its scale. Ah. Shui Shui is the great serpent spirit that resides in the waters immediately surrounding Chin Village and spanning all the way to Quin Chow Village. She is incredibly powerful and has chosen Chin Village as her home, and to prove this, she has left us with her beautiful green scale, which, as you can tell, has been stolen. And then all of a sudden the the other mayor, the, the female mayor, comes bursting back. She wears all black clothing. She comes bursting back and she says, That right there is a bold-faced lie. You know as well as I do that the red scale, which is the true scale, mind you, was given to Quin Chow Village and has been deemed her home, not Chin Village. You, as usual, are truly and completely mistaken, dear Mayor Yu. And they start to bicker back and forth. <laughs> and then uh, one of the guards just goes, <clears throat> sir. <clears throat> and he goes, oh, yes, my apologies. The important matter right now is to find the scale that has been stolen so the festival may go on now. Knowing that you four don't have the precious scale, I feel as though I can trust you to help us find it if you would be so willing to help us. If you do, I will ensure you have free travel to Whale Tail Island Pop Pop. What do they say? Post haste. Post haste. I feel like there's also like a like an old timey sound. Pop goes the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Promptly. Promptly. <laughs> Post haste. I like. Post haste. I'll ensure your travel to Whale Tail Island. Pop goes the weasel ferret. Are you willing to help us find the scale and save this celebration? Can we, like, break off into a huddle real quick? Can we, like, can we talk amongst ourselves? and Recess? Huh? Yeah, sure. No, so, uh, so, I don't know, what are you guys thinking? Nah. No? What if we give them the... We have no idea what we're even looking for. What if we give them, like, the heart of the mountain thing and just tell them it's the scale? They would know what the scale is. Do they? Well, they seem to have a whole sort of 
celebration around the scale, I would think they know what it looks like. Can I? I'm gonna. I'm gonna just break off and just yell, "Hey, hey! What color is the scale?" That's a great question you asked. Um, at the exact same time, both mayors shout out red separately. So one yells green, the other was red. Yes. So what who, color is the color of the mouth? It's red. So who who yelled red? <laughs> the female mayor. Shouts out red. The male mayor shouts out green. So what if we just give... Hold up, though. Question, though. <laughs> Which one? Wouldn't you... they have seen it when they searched us? I mean... Oh, yeah, the shard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they would have seen the thing of the mountain if they searched us. <laughs> so they, they would know they that's probably... not it. Or else Where they would have been you? like, what's this? The guard probably looked at it and went, hmm, but then he put it back because that's not what they were looking for. But the guard saw it, not not the other guys. (laughs) And if they can't even agree on what color it is, they see it every year, apparently. So, I mean, who's to say? What if he's one of the the subjects of the male's village? They're going to think you stole it. What if we, like, what if I put it behind a boulder and I'm like, hey, what's this? And, I mean, it's worth a shot, right? If you don't want to say it. That sounds good. Good enough for me. That that I lean over to Bill. I'm like, that should be fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so, I uh, think so. That sounds a great idea. Yeah, see, see, it's a great idea. See, I have good ideas. <laughs> yeah, great idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Pats him on the back. So, so, yeah, I'll just we'll just like take our like we'll just kind of shuffle off to the side real quick oh, we yeah oh, we because okay. we, oh. we gotta we gotta find <laughs> this one looks so ridiculous you're all just like sideways side yeah, yeah, a line. smiling and yeah, watching just, us that's very right. avatar the last airbender to be honest with you <laughs> yeah, very very discreetly there's probably like a yeah. sound that goes on and I very discreetly pull the shard out and just chuck it behind a bullet that's like 10 feet away <laughs> okay and I'm like We'll try and find it over here. And so I, I like go behind and I'm like, hey, what is this thing that I have just now found that apparently matches your description? And I, I walk over and I try and hand it to the lady. Okay, okay. Whoa. Just to, I just want to clarify. Where did you get that? As the game master, if this was Dungeons and Dragons and this was like not sort of like a as much story developing as much as it's like uh, anything can really happen, 100% I would have that. Uh, a gemstone shatter and bring the boulder to life because you know obviously oh, that's yeah. kind of what it <laughs> does that is what it does <laughs> but that's not what it does in this instance because that's not what we're playing here all right so you want us to do something else because no like, no no cut this whole interaction out no i i i think this is great no, you already threw it what what stone you've tossed into the so you oh, tossed no, the, old, it, the old saying you, you know, go rock it skip the, is a rock the I rock skipped the, the shard. And... <laughs> <laughs> so you brought it over saying, whoa, what's this? I think I found it. What um, is this thing I have just now found, just now? The female mayor says, oh, what is that? And the male mayor says, it seems to be a shard of some kind. Oh, is this not, is this not what you're looking for? Oh, no, no. It looks more like this. And he pulls out like a like a rolled up tapestry and he rolls it out and it shows this sparkling green gem on it and uh, the female mayor approaches and she says well that's what the fake one looks like not quite how the real scale looks excuse me this is what the real scale looks like and they start bickering back and forth again there's two well, there's only one real scale, of course. And as I said, it's red. No. The real scale is ours, and it's green. Do you guys, like, do you guys share it, or...? You see, the festival we're holding takes place every year, but not always in the same place. See, when Shui Shui gifted Chin Village with her beautiful green scale, Apparently, Quinchow Village just so happened to produce their phony red scale at the same time. Rather than start a war over which scale was the real one, as Shui Shui scale was supposed to represent peace, we decided to simply alternate which village would hold the festival each year with the respective village presenting their scale at the reveal ceremony, while the other village would have theirs on hand as well, but stored away. Alright, so that didn't work. 
feel like we could just sneak off and get a boat and they probably still would be arguing and probably make no progress whatsoever. Honestly, I mean, you went along with one of my dumb ideas, so I'm I'm down to try that. Except mine's not dumb, so yeah. Well, I had the humility to say mine's dumb. You were blinded by your own hubris, sir. I'm not blind. I've got perfect vision. Oh, I kind of want to hear more about this scale. Oh, my word. They, they, there's two different stories. It's two different scales. Clearly, it's two different scales. Well, what if it's not a scale, and it actually is a shiny rock, like Brock said? That, like, changes colors? Maybe. That'd be a pretty cool addition to my collection. Okay, well, okay. I don't think they're going to let you add this rock to your collection. Well, maybe I could just accidentally Take drop it and, and a piece a chips piece. off. <laughs> What if? What if? Uh, well, that's a great idea. <laughs> Let's damage this priceless rock. How do you know it's priceless? Well, clearly, look at the the state of this town, and like Bill, like ushers over, points to like the mass swarm of people screaming behind a curtain. Yeah, they're like they're literally fine. bawling their eyes out. They're like, oh my God, I think what's going it's on? a little. I think it's priceless in their eyes. Yeah, it's probably fine. I mean, look at these people though. They're emotionally devastated. I don't think they're in any condition to sail. Well, I mean, if you find your favorite rock, I think you'll be happy enough to sail. What if we give it like, what if we give it like three hours? And then if we can't find it, we'll just hop on a boat. Sounds boring. You're boring. I want to go on the quest now. No, Brock's got a point. I mean, yeah, we could probably steal a smaller ship, which, I mean, I don't know if that's what Mr. Ocaron would want us to do. But if we get a bigger ship, it would go faster. One with bigger sails, I mean. I was the one fighting the monster. At least that's what I would think. I'm not much of a sailor. You stood on the sidelines, and I'm the boring one? Uh, I was stood on the sidelines protecting the old guy and making sure no falling rocks fell on him again. I mean, Mm -hmm. he already had one tragic event in his life. He didn't need two. (laughs) I was right there, bro. I was... I was yeah. about to do a slide down a mountain. I was going to do a backflip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were going to I'm still that. waiting to see one of these fabled backflips, Flo. <laughs> what? I can totally do a backflip. <laughs> That's right? why you're trying to imply that. I yeah. can't do a backflip. Yeah. No, I... uh, the mayor looks over and he goes, Wait, this kid can do a backflip? Oh, dang. I've got to see that. No, he's got to stretch first, and Bill like does the quotes with his hands. But then he stretches too hard. <laughs> All right, so what, guys? It's kind of an art. I don't expect you guys to understand, but you know, well, of course not. Uh, so you said there's a scale missing. <laughs> yeah, we can help with that, right, guys? You will. Oh, good. And he quickly like puts his arm around your shoulders and and pushes you out towards the stage and now all of a sudden you're in front of like 400 500 people and he shouts out good news everyone these four strangers have agreed to help us find the scale as soon as they do the festival can return to normal and there's like a round of applause as everybody's like oh good they'll find it i know they'll find it with that being said Nobody gets to leave town because you are all suspects. I think he did it. And I just point the one random guy in the crowd. <laughs> he goes, oh, I did do it. Search him. He's like, he's like stubbing his face full of like, he's got some kind of like, he's got like fire flakes or something. And he's, <laughs> I'm trying, Bill's trying to speed up this process. <laughs> two, so he's just, search him. Two guards like rush over and they just start giving him the pat down and they're like, no, he's clean. Dang. I thought I had a hunch about that guy. And the mayor shouts out, search his fire flakes they like yeah. shove their hand into his fire flakes and move them around and there's nope that's clean too but my hand's all dirty you have to eat some to make sure i really don't like fire flakes do you want to find the scale yeah. <laughs> okay and he like he just licks like his hand because it's coated in in fire flake powder he's like oh that's fire flakes. <laughs> so I, I feel the quickest way to get this done is just to split up and do our own interrogations wouldn't you say that sounds like it would. Uh, sounds like what, it would what? I had to talk to more people. I thought you, after the job was done. If I may, 
it would make things easier on all of you. I can gather up the suspects that I have some suspicions about as far as having something to do with this case. I can gather them all up for you, and you can talk to them one by one in my office, perhaps. You're putting a lot of trust in four outsiders you've just met. Well, I don't have much choice. Okay, well, you know, you have give a us whole that security. List. <laughs> he holds out his hand and he says, <laughs> So, are we all in agreement here? And he holds out his hands to shake, and uh, you notice that he has, like, like black gunk all over his hands, maybe, like, ink or something. All over his hands. What happened to Dilbert? (laughs) (laughs) Quick, check your bag. I checked my bag for Dilbert. Oh, yep, I feel his hard shell. He's there. Yep. All right. You feel a a very, like, gentle caress from his, one of his many, um... Tentacles. Tentacles, yes. Like, just, no, no, just like a reassuring, like, hey, Dad, or something. I thought it was my fact. His Bildor's afraid of squids, and he's (laughs) he's just been penting it all down deep, deep down. (laughs) Snyder's Return is a tabletop roleplay interview and actual play podcast. We chat with content creators from both mainstream and indie publishers, and we release actual play episodes of systems like our City of Mist game, Meddlers, Monsters and Mabin, and more games coming in the future. We also have a TTRPG review show on YouTube, Fly Like a D6. Come and check us out. You can find us on Twitter, at Return Snyder, Instagram, Snyder's underscore return. You can find us on YouTube, at Snyder's Return, Discord, and everywhere you get your podcasts. Are you, like me, a fan of piracy or privateering um, out in your D&D campaign? Well, check this out. We have been working on a brand new airship combat system that means you and your privateer crew can now take to the skies and pillage at new heights. Within this system, you will get three-dimensional dynamic movement and combat rules. You'll get a brand new updated aircrew system, as well as brand new spells, items, creatures, and example airships for you to use in your campaign, as well as crews to put on them. But I think the coolest part about all of this is we have a custom shipbuilder application that will allow you to customize and build your very own airship. It means you and your team can have exactly what you want as you take on the skies. If you're interested in any of that, check out our Sky Zephyrs Kickstarter here at Homie and the Dude. Hey everyone, Skylar here, your friendly neighborhood game master. I just wanted to take a moment to let you know that we at Benders and Brews have been working our creative juices extra hard and pushing our artistic skills to the max in order to bring you some sick Benders and Brews merch. That's right. You can head on over to the Tee Public shop we created where you can snag shirts, stickers, mugs, and so much more with your favorite B&B characters on them. Grab a Chibi Mika baseball t-shirt, or maybe you want a broccoli mug designed with the Employee Blissful Brew Tea Shop logo. There's all of those and more, and even more down the road when we come up with ideas. So head on over to Tee Public and search for Benders and Brews, or you can follow us on social media where we'll post the links that will be easily available to all of you. And of course, if you get some of our merch, be sure to tag us in a photo of you with the respective B&B swag, because all of us at the studio would love to see it. Thanks for listening. Let's get back to the show. So... Of, of the people on this list, how many people do you know have had access to this this shard, the scale, in the mm. last day? Wait, yes. well, didn't he put his hand out for a handshake? And we just like, I'm not him shaking. We all <laughs> just <laughs> stared at I it. I guess uh, he looks down at his hand and he sees the ink and he goes, Apologies, that must have happened earlier. And he, he puts his hand away. All right, let me go through everyone I can think of. Let's see. There was me, of course, but <laughs> hey, I obviously didn't do it. Then you have Councilwoman Lynn. She's my right hand, my assistant, and the one who does almost all of the planning for this festival. She has access to the scale. Let's see. 
Councilman Young has a key to the storage building where we keep the scales during the festival, so I suppose if he has his key with him today, he might be a prime suspect. Of course, there's Cato. He's the guard for the storage building, so of course he had access to the scale. Mm, there's also Mayor Yu. When she and her people of Quin Chao Village arrived, she and I visited the storage building to place their fake red scale in there. Plus, she has a ton of motive, which is pretty suspicious. She was accompanied by Councilman Huan, who is her right hand on the council. And you look over and there's a dude with like kind of like spiky red hair um, standing right next to uh, Mayor, Mayor Yu. So this morning when you checked on it, can you recall exactly uh, exactly what happened? Uh, yes, of, of course. So this morning, Councilwoman Lin and I were running around ensuring that everything for the festival was ready. When the people of Quin Chao Village arrived, I met with Mayor Yu and Councilman Huan, who joined myself and Lin to the storage facility. Kato was already there keeping guard. He used his key to let us in. May you set her fake red scale down on a pedestal next to where we keep the true scale, which was in its case and covered over with a thin cloth, which is all part of the reveal. Then the four of us left, and Kato locked the door behind us, and that was that. Bill, you got any more hunches? Did you all leave? Yeah, he did it. And then I just point at another random dude. He says, <laughs> "Oh, jeez, oh, geez. Like he's a, uh, he's like, he's he's at a game. Like he's throwing like a ball like into a, a hoop or something like that. And so he's about to throw. He's like right about to throw. And then all of a sudden he's like, "Oh, what?" And then all of a sudden guards like just yeah. rush over and they're like frisking him and frisking him and checking him. And he's like, "Oh, wait, no!" And then they're like, "What's this?" And they pull out like a like a fancy pocket watch and he's like no i swear that's mine and they're like i don't know you look kind of sus he said he steal it <laughs> what the guard looks at you and he goes what <laughs> <laughs> you heard him we're the detectives here <laughs> michaela was right this is not a bill good is 100 to... percent like He's like, I don't know these people, and they gave me unlimited power, so I am trying to see where my extent of my power goes now, apparently. It doesn't help that he's Brock goading him on. He's like, you heard him. You heard him, man. <laughs> he was just staring what, what, at the what, guard. What did he say? You heard him. Eat it. The, the watch? No more fire flakes. What do you think I'm talking oh, about? Oh, dang it. He gets the watch back with somebody. He goes over and he buys fire flakes from a vendor. And then he just like walks back over and just starts munching on it. He's like, oh, I hate fire flakes. He says, oh, wow, guys. He's, no wonder he's you were. crying. He's, he's, he is. He's crying. He's, uh... He says, I prefer sea sesame crackers. Guys, I think I figured something out. I'm almost 100% sure that guard didn't do it. Hmm. Almost, though. Almost. Ma- uh, mayor Wu, I, the I, male I mean, mayor. He's doing everything we say. I mean, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't, you know, take a shell. Or maybe he's covering up by being too agreeable. It's, it's a scale. Search him! And I point to the guard. Oh, jeez, oh, jeez. And like the two other guys come running over, <laughs> and they start, like, uh, uh, patting him down and stuff, and they take all his weapons off of him and such. And then one guy's like, oh, I know what I'm doing, and he reaches into the dude's fire flakes, and then he just starts shoveling them into his mouth. <laughs> he's like, are they good, you fun? Great job! I don't think it's them, but these are delicious! Well, at least someone likes the fire flakes. Yeah. So guys, here's my idea, okay? What if we just took everyone on this list and just made them all come up here and then we just searched them all at once? But what if they don't have it on them and they just hit it somewhere else? Wait, oh, no, wait, that's you, a ridiculous... You think they're just gonna toss it behind some rock like it's some, like... Like it's some normal rock? I mean, we found the jet <laughs> behind a rock, so, you know... <laughs> but why who's to say that mr squid ink hands over here and i, I point at i point at woo very unapologetically mr squid ink hands over here 
Are you within earshot? Is he within earshot? Yeah, he's standing right yeah. next to you. Because <laughs> she wants him to this hear guy, <laughs> Who's to say this guy didn't take it and like put it in like an ocean thing and that's why he's got, he had a run with squid, that's why he's got black ink on his hands. Who's to say the scale's not in the ocean? Is it an ocean or a pond? Or a lake? It's the ocean. It's the ocean. It's the ocean. Who's to say he didn't put it in the ocean, had a run with a squid, that's where his, the ink's on his hands from. Unless you can explain the ink. Oh, y- yes. I can absolutely explain that for you. See, earlier, after I met with Mayor you and secured the scales in the st- at the storage facility, I realized I had forgotten my scroll with the speech I had prepared for the unveiling ceremony. So I rushed back to my office, and in the process of grabbing it, I knocked over my inkwell and, and spilled ink everywhere that's how it got all over my hands so you went and saw the shard the scale but then you frantically ran to your office during a huge event by yourself well as i said i had forgotten my speech scroll would you like to go and see the facility where the scales are stored perhaps that would offer an opportunity to find some clues to this mystery. Absolutely. And he turns around and he goes, Well then, follow me. Wait. May you is gone. Perhaps she has stolen it and is trying to hide it. Quick, guards, find May you and bring her to me promptly. I will be at the storage facility with the detectives. And they like all start to fan out. I think you took it. That's what he just said. Oh, well, that's a double meaning because I'm like, ah, uh, yes, oh, yes. I <laughs> is this guy's name Mayor Me? No, his is Woo. He is me, and I am. Me. Oh gosh, no, <laughs> you did it. No, I yeah, didn't. I, I say <laughs> not you. You what? Let's see if we can do this Abbott uh, Costello yes, bit yes. all night. Yeah, Mister. Let's get to a boat as quick as possible. Oh, great idea. <laughs> all right. So he takes you guys over to a facility. It's a very basic, like, stone hut. Um, it just, it's a one floor. It's not very big. It's basically just a small storage facility. It has no windows. It just has one door, and it is an iron door with a lock for, like, a space for a key. Uh, you arrive there. And you see Mayor Yu is standing there arguing with the guard that is standing there. And you can hear from a distance, she's saying, You don't understand! I must get inside because I need to check on Quin Chow Village's scale! Well, ma'am, as I heard, I think the scale's been stolen, actually. No, the green scale has been stolen! I need to see inside and make sure that the red scale is still in there. Well, I don't know anything about a red scale, ma'am, but, uh, you know, I, I, I can't let you in there. I'm on strict orders from Mayor Wu that, uh, you know, nobody's supposed to go in there. And then at this point, this is when you guys arrive. And, of course, Mayor, Mayor Wu says, Well, 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 the criminal does return to the scene of the crime. If you must know, I came here to ensure the red scale is still safe, as your storage facility is obviously not as secure as you promised me. And of course they start bickering again. You really get heated over the color of the scale. Well, we're, we got uh, Mayor Wu here, and uh, you know I'm sure he's allowed to allowed in his own office, so I think we're just going to go in and... Uh, Forgive me, I must not have been clear. This is not my office. This is simply the storage facility that we use to store the scales prior to the unveiling ceremony. Yeah, this has no windows. I'd be pretty sad if this was his office. I would. Keto's like, well, this is kind of like my office almost, (laughs) in a sense. I mean, I don't really go in there. I could... I probably shouldn't say that. I'm kind of incriminating myself. So, uh, who is allowed in there? Oh, who's allowed in there? Well, uh, I mean, like I said, I mean, I'm allowed to go in there if I have a suspicion that maybe someone's inside. Uh, otherwise, Mayor Wu is allowed in there. 
Uh, Councilwoman Lynn is allowed in there. That's about it. So, can we go in there with Mayor Wu to, to investigate? Mayor Wu's like, yes, of course. Please, uh, Mr. Cato, if you'd be so kind as to allow us entrance to the facility. He opens the door, and you guys go inside. Uh, inside, there's a number of just kind of boxes that are all, you know, nailed tight shut, um, scattered across the room. Some of them have, like, big, heavy blankets over them. Some of them are just sitting there. Um, there's a couple of other just kind of random obscure items sitting around that, you know, you might find in a storage facility, but then right in the center of the entire room, there is a like fancy stone pedestal and on top of it, there's, uh, there's nothing there, but you wonder if maybe there would be something there normally. Um, and Master, or, uh, Mayor Wu walks over and he points at it and he says, yes. So as you can see atop this pedestal here is where we keep the scale in a glass case. Now the facility is really where the security measures are focused. The glass case does not feature a lock. It's more there to keep the scale from getting dirty and such. Anyways, a white cloth normally sits on top of the glass case and it is removed during the ceremony. If I'm being completely honest, I did not look under the cloth when I came here to get the glass case that I had assumed the scale was inside of. Obviously, that means that any time between this morning and when I came to get the scale, it could have been stolen. Well, it's funny you should ask, Mr. Mayor, because I did actually kind of notice something at one point. I was making my rounds around the storage facility, as I do. I was on my uh, 27th round, in fact. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, I heard some weird jingling sound of some kind. Uh, but uh, by the time I got over here, there was nothing there. But I did see something running over into the bushes just past, over, right over there. And he kind of points off to the distance, not too far off, maybe like 20, 20, 30 feet um, away from the, the storage facility. Yeah, right over there. And yeah, I don't know, like I said, I don't know what it was, but he was just somebody wearing black, it looked like, or maybe it was an animal or something that just shot past like black fur or something. I don't know, but it didn't seem that big of a deal. I checked the door, everything was still locked. No big deal. Interesting. Mm, interesting, interesting. That most definitely sounds like a clue. Let's take a look at this stone pedestal here. All right. And Guo wants to approach it and look for any hidden panels, compartments. Ooh. Some stone trickery of any kind. Sure. Uh, I'm going to have you assess a situation. So does, does Keto not like to eat bread? Uh, it's actually Kato. Yep. Because oh, did I say Keto? Well, I guess we're going with Keto. Said it three times. All right, we're yeah. going with Keto. See, he's not a he's not a bread guy. He's, he's not a bread guy. He's in ketosis. Those were right. That's off a the five. Those went right off the tip. That's a five. You want to count it? Eight. An eight. All right. So with an eight, you're able to ask me one of those questions on the assess the situation, hmm. and you can kind of alter them as necessary to kind of fit what you're going for. Yeah, what's, what's my best way into this pedestal? Okay. I, got um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the you, you feel around the entire pedestal. You're looking for any, like, obscure divots or anything uh, sort of out of the ordinary. And... You don't seem to find anything on the pedestal, but as you are checking the sort of the bottom of the pedestal where it touches the ground, you do know, notice a couple of footprints, or rather boot prints, that seem to be both facing away and a set of the same boot prints that are facing towards, let's say towards first, then away. I don't know, as far as you can tell. Hmm. I analyze these boot prints. I uh, put my hand next to it to compare the size. Ah, okay, okay. Um, they seem to be fairly large boot prints. Um, probably two of your hand worth. So fairly large feet. Hey, Keto, what size shoe you wear, big guy? 
Oh man, I just wear these, and he holds them up, and they're fairly large sized shoes. Would you mind stepping in these boot prints real quick? Sure. Sets his foot down. Oh, look at that. They're pretty darn close. Look at wow, that's cool. Whose are these? This guy. I don't know. This guy's guy's great. Yeah, I love him. They're his now. He's stepping (laughs) in them. Well, just just one. I mean, there's a whole trail of them. We can. Uh, You look down at Mayor Wu's feet. And you see that he's wearing some very, like, light, like, fabric shoes, which is a bit more common in, you know, kind of higher society. Um, You can see footprints that match those. But these ones stand out as not his. So why would they, you know, be here? Oh, okay. Someone that wasn't him. Or retrieving him. Correct, correct. Got it. So it's not him. Apparently. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got that revealed. Well, you at least know that he wasn't the one wearing those shoes. But can we get Mary you in here? Yes. Hello. How can I help you? She peeks through the doorway. She was just kind of standing outside. Well, she kind of rushes in. She pushes past you, and she pulls back another uh, blanket over what looked like just another one of the the crates. And sure enough, inside is a brilliant red scale. Whoa! Whoa. Found it. Well, this is our scale, the red scale from Quinchow Village. We were told to find a scale. Done. <laughs> and done. Give and us done. our boat ride, <laughs> Mayor. Mayor Yu is case like, closed. Mayor <laughs> Wu. Mayor Wu is like. Wait, no. I need you to find the green scale. I don't give a crap about that red piece of junk. Excuse me? And of course they start bickling. You just met us today. You think we care? Yeah, that's true. You are here to find the green scale. That's the one that's missing. You got a whole security team, my guy. As I said before, I can't trust anyone here in the village. They're all suspects, and any one of them could be guilty. Good boy. (laughs) What's this good point? Oh. Just, I said he should always follow his hunches. Shouldn't let, shouldn't let it get him down that they didn't turn out out there. Ah. Uh, yeah. Very cryptic of you, Guo. Uh, I think yeah, Bill's just kind of, Bill's just kind of looking around the room. How many people are in here? Is it just so Wu, you, and It's Wu, Kato? you, and Kato. Oh. And, I, you, and you guys. Wait, what What kind of shoes does she wear? Does uh, Wu wear? She, you. Or sorry, you wear? Yes, yes. <laughs> Why did I do this to myself? This is so <laughs> dumb. You wears uh, fabric shoes as well. Very Ooh. similar to uh, Wu's. Jeez. Do the Ooh, shoe yeah. prints that do the shoe prints that were spotted the heavy set ones or they do they lead out the door? Yes. Do they lead towards that bush? Uh you could rely on your skills and training to see if you can follow them. Ooh, seven. Seven. All right. So that would be just a that would be a soft hit. So you are following these footprints, and as you follow them, you realize um, they do lead out towards the bush. Okay. And then you turn around to let everybody know the exciting news that you followed the footprints to the bush, and they're all staring at you with a sense of sort of shock and uh, the audacity kind of a look. And you look down, you realize that you walked on the footprints as you were following them and now they're all they've all been stepped on and everyone's that, got that look yeah well i don't know uh, i guess everyone, you guys. everyone's on the case they've all cracked the case okay well it leads to the bush cool i'm just gonna go to the bush i don't care it's not like crikey it's not it's apparently i control this town with this with this search case i can just rest anyone search anyone do anything i mean you could say that you didn't step on the footprints but i guess it costs you like oh no i definitely did okay i don't care wait we uh, know that tito's boots are pretty close match so oh yeah that's true wait a minute what is mayor who wearing mayor you no mayor oh oh yes mayor Mm. Wu 
is wearing a set of ceremonial... Wait, I, make I thought sure you said he's wearing fabric shoes. Yeah, the Wait. shoes. What are, He's asking for, like, the other clothes, yeah. right? Oh. You said Mayor Yu was wearing all black earlier. That's true. Mayor Wu is wearing green, matching the color that he believes the correct scale is supposed to be. Yeah, uh, Mayor oh, Yu, man. what else? Uh, I really wish it was a blue scale, because then it would be Mayor Wu, Mayor Wu. Mayor Wu, Mayor Wu, Mayor Shu, Mayor. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Be doing some tongue twisters over here. So, Mayor Wu, yeah, Mayor Wu, Mayor Yu, Mayor. With the blue, blue shoe, shoe. <laughs> blue <laughs> shoe, Mayor blue skadu. We can't do. We can't do. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so he's wearing a ceremonial green clothes. Yes. But Keto said that he saw a black figure go into the bushes, and Mayor Yu is wearing black. Possibly an animal. Possibly. <laughs> an animal. <laughs> it is entirely possible. It is a bear. A little bear. bear running around. Bears bear. running around, <laughs> stealing the scales. <laughs> so a bear. Say it could have been a coon cat. <laughs> Bears. Uh, the know, other thing that you notice that Mayor. You, the female mayor, is wearing is she has a number of pieces of jewelry. I mean, I guess I'm assuming you're looking around at everybody. Uh, she has a set of jewelry laid in across herself. It sounded weird to say it that way, but we're gonna roll with it. Um, of course, Wu has uh, a set of many keys buckled to his belt that jingle as he walks. <laughs> Yeah. The the Maybe. obviously the uh, the jewelry jingles as Mayor Yu <gasps> walks. Jingle jangle. The same jingle jangles that Keto heard. Is there anything in the bush? Uh there is nothing that seems to be in the bush except the scale. <laughs> the scale itself. <laughs> we did it. No. Uh, there is a there is a cloth inside that seems. Gosh. That seems to be smudged with some sort of black substance. Mm, guys, we found an immunity item. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> so, uh, just a cloth. It's not covering anything? No. It's a fairly large cloth. It's like kind of sticking out or kind of almost draped across the back of this bush. Could I put my hands on the cloth to see if any black stuff residue leaves on my hands? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it it does. It's a little bit. It's not much. Um, most of it is dried into this cloth, whatever it seems to be, the substance. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit that sticks to your hands. Could I compare that with Mayor Wu? Mr. Wu, if that is your real name. It is my real name. What do you want? Yeah, I want to I want to take you up on that handshake from a couple hours ago. That is a strange request indeed, but as a politician, I would never withhold from one of my constituents my hand for a shake. And he reaches out his hand. So I reach out my mirroring hand. So if it's his right hand, I reach out my left. Okay. I grab his wrist and then so I oh, hold oh his hand my. up and I hold my hand up and compare. And how do they how do the hands compare? Oh, it is a very similar substance. So, uh, or, or visual, or whatever you want to call that, Mr. Mayor Wu, Martha May Wu, is that your wife's name? No, live down in Wuville with all your other. No, I live in Chin Village. <laughs> so, Mr. Wu, would you like to explain how the residue on my hand from this cloth matches your hands? The cloth, oh my, and he sees the cloth in your hand. He's... That's the cloth we use to cover the glass case that holds the scale. What do we do with this information? Where did you find this? No, it was in this bush. Perhaps whoever stole the scale has black residue on their hands, Mr. Wu. Now, now, I can see where your mind is going and the conclusions you are making. But again, I assure you, I was not the one that stole the scale. Mm-hmm. That's what they all say. I feel we need to see your office, Mr. Wu. We'll meet the suspects in your office. Yeah, call them all there. Right yeah. now. Yeah. That's an order. Okay. Uh, he turns yeah, to yeah. he turns to <laughs> Kato and he says, Kato, since the green scale is no longer here, your duty guarding this area is over. Your new order is to go 
and find these people. He just starts listing off a number of people. There is a scale in there. Well, I don't care about that phony piece of junk. Miss Ma- <laughs> uh, Mayor, Mayor Yu is inside and she says, No, wait, you can't do this. You promised that my red scale would be safe. Who's going to protect it? Nope. I don't trust you, so I'm not leaving you here. But someone is going to steal my scale. We'll lock the door. Let's go to the office. All right, you head to the office. They force uh, do, do, Matt, or they force Mayor Yu out of the storage room. They lock it with the key behind her. She's like, I swear, if the red scale is missing, when I come back, I will bring the full wrath of Quinchow Village down upon all of you. Yeah, we'll be on a boat by then. We don't care. (laughs) Then they lead everyone (laughs) off towards uh, the office, the Mayor Wu's office, where you will get to meet the rest of the suspects next time. Next time. Next time. We have this whole interrogation next time. That's right. I'm going to go listen in to the full interrogation of all all the suspects. Search them. Search them. Search them. And it's going to be done in no time. Ah, there you go. All right. So be sure to come back next time for Benders and Brews episode four when we will hopefully reveal the results of this mystery. Thank you so much for listening to our show. Of course, don't forget to follow or subscribe to our podcast through whatever podcast site that you're using, such as iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and others. Additionally, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Just look for the social media icons. Following us on social media gives you access to all news, announcements, and of course, new episodes as they are released. You can check out our website, vendorsandbrews.com, which will feature all of our episodes as well as news, announcements, and even cool character and player profiles. It's a great hub of information for the Vendors and Brews podcast. And finally, we would be truly humbled if you would be willing to take the time to leave us a review if your podcast site allows you to do so, such as on iTunes. Or in the case of YouTube, you can hit the like and subscribe button and drop us a comment. Tell us about what you thought about our podcast episodes. It sure would mean a lot to us. Avatar Legends is a tabletop role-playing game created by Magpie Games. Nickelodeon, Avatar, and all related titles, logos, and characters are trademarks of Viacom International Inc., all rights reserved. I also want to thank the following artists who you can find on Fiverr for their amazing creative work on this podcast. Character art was done by Alicio Papadraw. Background art by Kenichi. Music by Joe Tims 215 Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.